What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So we have patch 3.2 coming out tomorrow. Um, my last patch review uh, that I had took me about three and a half hours. So I'm really, really hoping that this one's gonna be shorter. Uh, I'm recording this after stream. So I've already gone through these cards. I've already had some kinds of like process it. So hopefully this will be a much faster review. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on each individual card. <clears throat> if you want something like that, you can always go to my uh, VOD if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, let's get right into it. Um, so, feed cards, when you click on them, uh, you click on it and it'll immediately go off and you don't have to reactivate it, which is kind of nice. Nice quality of life. Okay, okay. Uh, so, in Arena, they found that picking your leader at the beginning of a game is better. So, they're going to do that. So, that's awesome. Uh, I think this is going to start tomorrow. Um, so, if you're an Arena player, you have that to look forward to. Twitch streamers, which does include me, uh, will now be able to share in-game information with their viewers using newly introduced Gwent Observer Overlay. So this is essentially a Twitch overlay. Um, when you're watching somebody on stream, you can like hover over their deck. You can see what's in their deck in their graveyard. You can, I'm assuming, you can hover over cards, and it'll show what the card does and have like a little pop-up. So that's kind of nice. If you're a new player, it's definitely going to help. So definitely a welcome addition. Um, before I start talking about the reworks there's one other thing that cdpr is kind of slowly letting us into uh and that is leader abilities and the 3d models are no longer going to uh, be associated with each other so they're basically ripping them apart <clears throat> it sounds really bad really abrupt um i think the downside of this kind of change is it's going to take people some time to adapt so typically when you go into a game of gwent you see your opponent's playing Ada. you go, okay, that leader does eight damage and then extra damage uh, to adjacent units if it overkills. Um, and you typically mulligan based on the leader that you see. Well, now you're not really going to see a leader. You'll see a leader because they're going to play whatever leader they want, but there's going to be like an icon. Uh, I'm going to pull up what they showed us on stream. So here we have, uh, if we look, there's the Dana one. It has like a hand with the Squaytail icon. I guess you get to play Squaytail cards. Okay, that makes sense. Um, booster, right? Furl test. Um, I don't know why it's called booster. Whatever. Uh, it looks like the zeal command. So obviously you're giving zeal to cards, friend. Uh, you can see the little card, the special card with the resurrection wing. So you're resurrecting a special card. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, the Philavandral one, the, the little arrow up is like you're upgrading the cards in your hand. So that makes sense too. The DJ one, I don't no honestly it's two daggers and a coin i i don't know about that one whatever um basically the idea is you get to add a leader to your or sorry <clears throat> you get a specific ability for your deck and then you get to play whatever leader you want so let's say you have the really cool unseen elder skin and you really want to play it but unseen elder sucks and is unplayable well now you can build whatever deck you want play whatever whatever ability you want and then you can play unseen elder and you can have him on the battlefield you can interact with him so that's really cool um i do think there will be an adjustment phase but i think long term it's a good thing it also means cdpr can make uh, 3d models uh, and just add new characters to the game and not really worry about a adding new abilities and be balancing them right now we have 36 different leaders um 36 different abilities that all need to be balanced somewhat uh as you we found out in the last patch uh, sometimes one or two points here and there can grossly <laughs> power creep a leader. So balancing is obviously an issue. So I, I think this is a good thing. It'll allow them to make more cosmetics in the future, which I mean, I like cosmetics. They're great. If you don't like them, don't buy them. If you like them, you can support CDPR. Um, either way, I think it's a good change. Um, some people had issues with like Francesca leading a bunch of dwarves. Well, now you can have Bruver lead all your dwarves. So that's kind of nice. Uh, some people are going to be weirded out that, I don't know, Aridin is spawning Arrakis drones or like fruit from Gurney or whatever. And that's going to be kind of weird. But honestly, is it the end of the world? No. If it's that big of a deal for you, when you go and build your deck, you can make the lore uh, check out. Um, so I think it's going to be fine. Uh, it's not going to be included in this patch. I think they might be doing the icons, so these little icons right here to kind of uh, get us adjusted to it. Um, but they're not pulling the leaders off yet. So I, I think they're doing icons starting tomorrow. And then maybe next patch, next month, uh, they'll pull the leaders and separate the two. And then we'll have to go from there. Um, so before people freak out and say it's the end of the world and CDPR is ruining their game, I, I think we should just wait, see how it pans out. Because... 
overreacting to something like this is something that people do quite frequently. So just let's be patient. All right. Rework cards. So there's a bunch. There's a lot. So I'm going to try to fly through these. Uh, any of these cards right here, if you have these cards, you can mill them for full value for the next four days because they are getting reworked. So they're not getting necessarily nerfed or buffed. They're just, they have a different ability, right? Uh, I'm not going to go over them. Yeah. So new features. Okay. Variety of interactions with the game board. So this is something we see in Hearthstone. You can click on the map and little like dust particles shoot up. So that's kind of cool. Uh, if your opponent's roping at you, uh, you can click on the board and interact with it. So that's kind of cool. Um, audio on use abilities for leaders. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Gameplay. Neutral. Dandelion Poet provision cost change from 14 to 12. Uh, this is a neutral card, so you can play it in any faction. Is this good enough to start seeing play? Perhaps the closest thing is Roach. Roach is 10p. The difference between this and Roach is Roach automatically comes out of your deck, whereas Poet, you have to play it. But with that said, Poet, you can play with other cards and increase the tempo when you need it. Uh, the thinning is kind of relevant. Uh, not not as much so as for Roach. Um, I do think Poet is going to be an auto-include in a very specific... Uh, maybe not auto-include, but a, a very good contender for a card to run in a Nilfgaard deck. Uh, when we get to that... I'll explain why it'll be very apparent, but this is a very viable card in a very specific Nilfgaard deck that I actually think do think will be good. Um, outside of that exact Nilfgaard deck, I'm not sure. It's not terrible. You can still play King of Fisher, Poet King, or I guess we'd call it Poet King. Um, not a terrible combo. Uh, it's just a little gimmicky. I don't know if people are going to jump onto the Poet train, but for whatever reason, if round one tempo is more important and you just need the points, maybe you can run Poet and Roach. It's a lot of provisions, but maybe you can. Uh, I do think we will see some Poet play. I don't think it'll be a ton, but I think it'll be some. So that's kind of nice. Cranthy Heatwave provisions change from 12 to 10. As another neutral, obviously. The card still zero play, other than like people who hated Seahill way, way back in the day. Now, it's still pretty bad. 10 provisions. If you're removing a tall card, it's usually just worse than Curse of Corruption. Uh, you can't target immune units like the Immune Dragon and Scoia'tael, so that's strictly worse. Uh, you can target artifacts, but nobody plays like artifact-heavy decks, and typically removing one artifact, if they do play a deck like that, doesn't actually win you the game. Um, the only viable, th or <clears throat> valuable thing on this ability is the fact that it banishes. Um, and... You might actually want to banish because uh, Vald Carl, the the champion that it creates, is pretty good. And there's a new, not new, but uh, Sig Drifa's right now can res that for nine provisions. So uh, SK is going to be pretty good next patch. And this is a way to counter it. Do you want to run a 10p card to counter exactly that card? Maybe. I don't know. It's a pretty expensive uh, tech tool, and against other decks that don't play tall units, it's not great. So we'll have to see. It'll see more play, um, but it's a very, very niche tech. So there has to be a lot of SK for this to run uh, to see play. Musicians of Blaviken change to deploy gain randomly. Shield, Doom, Resilience, or Poison. Uh, the only difference, I believe, is instead of immunity, it can gain Doom now, which I think is a good thing. Uh, but the big change is power change from 4 to 6. This is huge. Uh, this is now a 6 for 6 on play, and 25% of the time you roll Resilience. That's not bad. Uh, 6 for 6 isn't amazing. It's not great. You can play uh, 6 for 5 with Swallow Potion. Granted, you do walk into resets and tall removal. This card is playable, and if you get lucky and you roll that 25%, it's really good. Uh, I think this card's going to see a good chunk of play. Rolling that 25% can just win you the game. Uh, we've seen Gabor be very strong in Squayata, and this is a neutral Gabor, kind of, 25% of the time. Um, worst case, 6 for 6 once again. I, I do think people will play this card. It's no longer a super meme. Before, it was just a bad card because it just wasn't good. The uh, floor was too low, whereas the floor now is not that low, and the ceiling is quite high. A 6 point uh, resilience card is really, really good. I do think this card will see play. Saying real provision change from 7 to 6. Doesn't matter. Scorch provision change from 14 to 13. Um, I don't think this will increase the play in Scorch. I think decks that already run Scorch, like very heavy removal, like Ethne decks, yay, they have an extra provision to work with. That's kind of nice. Um, but I don't think this is enough to push like Scorch into every deck or anything. So if you're running Scorch before, you now have one extra P. That's nice. Cool. Trish Telekinesis power change from 2 to 4. Uh, this is kind of nice. 
If you play Fog out of TK, you're looking at 11 for 11, which is pretty good. Uh, the big thing that I'm looking forward to doing is Epidemic. Uh, you can TK into Epidemic because, well, before Epidemic on TK, it was pretty useless because she's a two-point body, which means unless you boosted her in hand, your floor is twos, which is really bad. Well, now your floor is fours. Okay, that's not terrible. Um... You could make a really heavy, like, double epidemic, Scorch. I mean, Scorch just got buffed. Uh, Shiru with the new call, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, you could play, like, Ale, and then you play Ethne. And you you could legitimately be wiping boards. Um, yeah. Do I think that's going to be a tier 1 deck? No. But I'm going to play it, and it's going to be fun. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, if you're running high P bronzes, which there aren't too many, really. The main one is, like, Weather. Uh, TK is better. So she's a little better. Um... Yeah, I'd like to see her provision reduced by one, but we'll see. Uh, villain Treadmirth power change from five to six. This was the suggestion I made over the last, like, two months. I said if Bork went to six from five, he'd be playable because it plays around, like, Serret and uh, Muzzle. Um, obviously, he does that, and yeah, I think he will see some play. I don't know why you wouldn't see a little bit more of it. Uh, will it be, like, a really, really good card and seen in every deck? Of course not. Uh, it's... A type of card, yeah, I'm trying to think if it'll see more or less play than Poet. Probably see less play than Poet, um, just because some decks go tall and this is kind of like anti-synergy with their deck, but it's okay. Uh, it's really good in round one. It catches people off surprise. The only reason this would be a bad card is if a lot of people are playing locks, and yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know. Uh, it's out of thunder range. It's out of muzzle range. Yeah, I it survives uh, a good chunk of the time, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. I very much look forward to playing this card. Uh, Monsters! Detlaf, uh, we have a different ability now, so his ability is given enemy unit bleeding for three turns, charge three. When all the charges are used, spawn an Ekimaru on a row. So the idea is you have three of these, three bleed on each, you can get a total of nine value, plus the two, which is eleven. Uh, this is assuming they don't have purify, this is assuming they don't consume the unit, this is assuming you don't kill the unit before the bleed goes off, right? So there's a lot of different things, it's not just like an unconditional eleven point leader. Um, and it has synergies with the cards that we're going to go into. Uh, I'm not going to really evaluate this leader because, I don't know, we'll have to see. It definitely has synergies with some of the reworks on the vampires. Is it good enough as a standalone outside of, like, a vampire synergy type deck? Probably not, but honestly, who knows? I mean, if there's no Purify, 11 is not terrible. That's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see. A buy a power change from 3 to 4. This is the Death Wish unit that procs a Death Wish and has Thrive. This card is terrible, and the card is still terrible. Barbagazzi power change from 5 to 6. Uh, the only deck that really saw this was uh, Death Wish, and I don't think Death Wish is good enough to be Tier 1 or Tier 2. Um, or the Detlaf deck where you consume Detlaf multiple times and you just get a really big card. Uh, the nice thing about this is it plays around Muzzle. Typically, you would play Barbara Gatsi and your opponent would Muzzle it. And then you just have like a weird Detlaf in hand. Or vice versa, you play the Detlaf first, they kill it, and then your Barb doesn't have anything to consume. Whereas now you can play it, your opponent can't Muzzle it, you can get that combo off. So that's kind of nice. Uh, a little bit of buff for that deck. How good is that deck after the patch? I don't know. Uh... Probably not tier one, but you might see a little bit more of it because of this change. Uh, Brucia, I still don't know how to pronounce this card, but whatever. Thrive Deploy, give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns. Um, yeah, this card no longer has death blow. It is just a, I believe it's a three that pings for two. It doesn't ping for two, it bleeds for two. So it's a five for four with Thrive. So it's basically a Wyvern for one P cheaper, except you don't do two damage, you do two bleed. How often was that two damage important? Like, how often were you killing a card with that Wyvern? Not very often. So this is, most of the time, just a better Wyvern. So, yeah, this card's really good. You just play it in every monster deck because it's good. There's no condition anymore. Are, are they really going to knock off that bleed too? Maybe. Oh, but it, it's a different trap. <laughs> I knew that would happen. Thank you for the sub while I record a YouTube video. I need to turn that off. Thank you very much. I turned it on during stream and I thank you <laughs> for these 16 months. <laughs> okay. My heart rate went up a little bit. Very good card. You're going to see it a lot. Crimson Curse, provision cost change from 11 to 9. Um, we didn't get any kind of rework on the ability, which is kind of unfortunate. I, I kind of want it to happen at the end of turn instead of, tur uh, instead of start of turn. Um, is this good enough to see play? Um, yes, I do think people will try it 
because vampires are getting buffed. Um, is it good enough to see play after the initial testing for the first week or two? I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I probably not. And here's the other big issue. If this is good, if it is good, which it can be, right? In a 10 card round, this can get like 20, 30 value, which is a lot. But if it ever does become good, people just throw a fog into their deck. It's a neutral card. It's accessible. It's an eight for seven in most matchups. And against this matchups, it's kind of double that. It's a little more than double because uh, it's more turns that you're denying. Um, so yeah, the problem is if this card ever gets out of hand, you just play a neutral card that kind of just shuts it down. So I, I can't imagine it being crazy. Uh, you might lose to a vampire deck because of this, because it's not that bad when left untouched if you don't have removal for those vampires. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be a tier one deck, but it might ha uh, catch you off guard. Uh, get L ability change to basically if they're bleeding, you can do three damage instead of uh, just the one damage. Uh, none of the stats change. It was already a pretty good card. It's just you needed to damage a unit down to one. Now it's a little easier to do that because, well... You have your leader, Detlaf, you bleed them three, and instead of having to wait for them to go down to one, you can wait for them to be at three, assuming they have a bleed tick on them, uh, and then you get the uh, bonus ability of Gale. If you're running a Detlaf deck, you 100% put this card in. It's really good. It'll get like four over provision most of the time. It's a very strong card. Um, this is one of the cards that's going to give you a reason to be running a vampire slash that left deck. Garcane ability change to uh, every ally turn on turn and boost self by one. If there is a bleeding enemy unit, uh, this card is four provisions. So you can portal this out, combine this with your leader. You can basically permanently have plus one, plus one. If you have two of these out every single turn, um, they're going to start at five. That's good. Um, if there's not a lot of removal in the meta, which uh, removal is getting nerfed pretty heavily this patch, uh, these might stick, and worst case scenario, one of them dies, and then one of them keeps going. I do think this will be a card that is also very good in monsters. Will you run Portal with this? Not necessarily, um, because you have other cards like this that you're going to be wanting to play. But it's a good card. If you're playing a Bleed Vampire deck, you're definitely going to include this card. It went from an unplayable meme card to actually a good card. Yeah, you're going to see this card uh, in every Vampire deck. Keltalus power change from 6 to 9. Keltalus provision change from 10 to 11. This is a big one. This is huge. I'm assuming it's still melee restricted. But basically, this card, you're going to see it everywhere. It's a really good card. You don't have to go all in Keltalus. It's just really strong. You can play this in basically any deck. Um, worst case scenario, if your opponent is playing no unit, you play it on your range row, and it's a 9 for 11. That's not the end of the world, especially because you're average scenario is you have fewer units especially if you uh go second right if you win coin flip your opponent's going to be going first they're going to naturally have more units on the board because they're starting first and they're playing more cards before you do um so when you play this card it's not unlikely that you have fewer units and you kill their lowest unit and their lowest unit it's going to probably be like a three so out of the gate you play this card you get a nine point body you kill a three you broke even, right? You're, you're over even. You got 12 value for 11, right? And if they don't kill the card, you win. Or or you're very close to winning. Uh, the card just kind of snowballs out of control. Now, there are removal, obviously. There's tall remo any kind of tall removal, professional, Geralt, uh, any kind of movement, any kind of lock, right? So there, there's ways to deal with it. But if they don't have it in their hand at the time, this card can just get out of control. Uh, this card's actually pretty scary. Um... There aren't a ton of monster buffs, but this is a very significant one. This is a cool card that you can basically play in every deck. It is like Kira level value. It's just really, really strong. Um, you should be scared. Uh, you might have to start running some kind of answer to this in every deck because you're going to see this card. Uh, the only reason you would see this card is if monsters were unplayable, but... I was playing Gurney Shoop pretty well last patch, and Gurney Shoop can run this. It's not that hard. Basically, any monster deck can play this. So, you're going to see this card. It's great. Maroon ability change to Death Wish. She's an enemy unit with four or less. It used to be three. Uh, the problem is it's still random. Yes, you can steal four-point engines if your opponent plays it, but you have to play Unseen Elder. And do you really want to play Unseen Elder? Nope. Um, yeah, it's still random. If it was forced to take the highest unit, what I mean by that is if they have a one, a two, and a four and the Death Wish goes off and always stole the four, then I think it's good. But that's not what it does. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Card is bad because there's really not enough Death Wish support. 
Uh, Nucrat. Necrot, uh, ability to change the zeal order melee, give an enemy unit bleeding for two turns, cooldown two. Whenever you play a vampire card, reduce this unit's cooldown by one. Uh, so this used to be a drain card, and it was every time you played an organic card, it reduced the cooldown. Um, you're going to run this card in any kind of vampire deck. Is it good outside of a vampire deck? Nope. Will it get more value than the old variant? I would say yes, because it has zeal. Uh, the old one, you would play it, your opponent would remove it, and you got no value. Now you at least get the five for five on play. So... Yeah, it's not amazing, but in a vampire deck, I think it's okay. I do think the card will see play. Uh, it is another engine that your opponent has to deal with, right? Uh, if you're playing two of these and two guard canes, that's four engines that they have to deal with. Maybe you have a Keltalus thrown in there too, and then all of a sudden, you got some engines that they have to deal with. So, yeah, maybe. Uh, old Spirit Tip provision changed from 15 to 14. Yay! Um, okay. Sure, if you're playing Spirit Tip, he's a little cheaper. Awesome. Uh, this kind of makes sense, especially because Northern Rounds gold cards got buffed a lot. Uh, is this enough to start pushing it to s monsters to be viable? Probably not. Um, so we'll have to see. I, I think the Keltless buff is huge, and I think people will start playing it. I don't think you have to all-in Keltless. I think you can just throw it into any kind of monster deck for a value card. Um, yeah, will vampires be good? I have no idea. Okay, so we're 20 minutes in, and we've only done monsters. This might take a little longer. I'm going to try to fly through these. I apologize. Uh, Ice Tursec ability change to order. Play Skellige unit from your graveyard. You can play any card now. It's not limited to Warriors. This leader will see more play. You have a lot more options. Good change. On Create Armor Smith power change uh, to two. Uh, deploy. This doesn't matter. Not going to matter. You're not going to see it. Longship ability change to melee whenever your opponent plays a unit damage by one. It used to be ranged. It's now melee. Why did that happen? Don't know. On Crate Marauder, power change from 3 to 2, but now it splits 3 damage randomly between all enemy units. Only enemies, so there's no more highlights where it pings your own units 4 times or whatever. Um, yeah, the only reason this card used to be good is because it was a 6 for 4 back in the time when 4 for 4 was normal. Now that we have 5 for 4s, and now that this is a 5 for 4, it's just okay. It's alright. It's really good against Milva, I suppose. Other than that, it's just an okay card. Uh, you can play it now in any deck, though, because it's a 5 for 4, and it might proc your uh, Bloodthirst. So, yeah, it's probably a card you're going to see play. Is it auto-include? Yeah, maybe. Um, unless there are better bronzes to be running in that very specific deck. Otherwise, yeah, it's not terrible. Uncrate Warrior provision change from 5 to 4. Uncrate Warrior ability. Deploy damage an enemy unit by 1 if played from graveyard. Damage it by 3. Uh, it used to do 4. Card sucks. Like, super sucks. It was good because before you played it with Sarah's and Freya. And doing 4 damage and killing an engine is really significant. Doing 3 damage, nobody cares. 3 damage is useless. Uh, this card will see no play. Uh, Berserk de definition has been changed to trigger this ability whenever base power, power is equal or lower to specified amount. Before it was... Um, half like minus one now it's just trigger at this number so it's going to be easier for new players it's just going to be easier in general to understand uh, so an example would be the disgrace brawler the seven strength unit um before it was when it berserked which was uh three hp uh it killed itself um now it'll say berserk three i mean i guess i could skip to it it's all the way down here let's see if i can find it okay i, I don't see it but We'll get to it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so this is just going to be easier to understand for everybody. Sarah's has a new ability. Uh, if you play it on the melee, you summon a shield maiden from your deck. Deploy range. Summon a queen's card from your deck. It's summon, not spawn. If it was spawn, I think it would be a good card. The fact that it summons instead of spawn, I think it kills it. Just because if you're going to play it for shield maidens, you got a mulligan two into your deck. You don't really want to do that. It's like a worse Vernon Roche in... Uh, or Roche Merciless in uh, Northern Realms. So I don't think it's great. It might see a tiny bit of play, but I, I think it's kind of underwhelming. Uh, I believe it's 10 provisions. Corrupted Flaminica power change from 5 to 4. Provision cost change from 6 to 7. Ability change to deploy. Boost self by 1 for each beast in your graveyard. Um, so they killed Beast SK. Bear Master no longer does what it used to do. Now it's on a gold card. Um, yeah, this deck sucks now. The deck was kind of memed here before, and it could play this ability five times. You play two Freyas. Uh, two Bear Masters and a Decoy. Now you can do it one time. So it sucks. Yep, this card will see no play. Uh, Disgrace Brawler. There it is. Bloodthirst 3. Uh, lock itself. And then Berserk 3. Destroy itself. So when it reaches 3 HP, uh, it will kill itself. Uh, so that is the example of Berserk uh, happening right there. Donar. Power change from five, uh, 4 to 5. And he can only do 4 damage instead of 5. 
Yep, it looks like CDPR doesn't like gold cards with bodies doing five damage. Rip. Uh, yeah, you're not going to play this card. There's no reason to. doing Not doing five damage is pretty bad, and this card already was seeing uh, a lot less play. Queen's Guard, provision change from six to five. Uh, ability change to Berserk 3, spawn a base copy of self, and summon it to the row. Um, yeah, there's some... I think there's some miswording going on here. Uh, at one point, I believe it said the strength went from, like, 4 to 5, I think. And then the Berserk was 3, which meant you had to do 2 damage to it, which made it really bad. Now I think they fixed it, and now it's 4, and then you have to deal 1 to it. Uh, to spawn the Berserk. Yeah, the problem is it's too gimmicky. It's too hard to pull off. It's not worth it. You're not going to play this card unless you're playing Sarah's, but I don't think you're going to play Sarah's. I, I don't think this card will see any play. Freya's Blessing Provision cost changed from 7 to 6. The only deck that was running Freya was the Beast SK deck, which is now dead, and the deck up here that was running the Oncrate Warriors, which are also dead now. So you're going to have to be running a different deck. Uh, is this good enough to just run it for Peace? Yeah, probably. Priests are quite good. Um, not to mention they also have the Alchemy tag on it. Uh, and it is limited to Skellige Bronze. What you're going to notice in this patch, if we get through all the patch notes, is CDPR is making it so that... Um, Factions are more confined to themselves. Uh, they typically don't go out of themselves and work with other, like, neutrals. So, you'll, like, M here, for example, we've already seen this. Uh, M here can only pick up Nilfgaard units. You're going to see some more leaders doing stuff like that only with specifically uh, their faction. So, this is an example. Uh, it's only Skellige, which means they can make bronzes in the future and not worry about Freya kind of breaking it. So, uh, will Fre Freya see play? Yeah, probably. See a bit of it. Um, but I don't think it's insane because the warrior change. Grammar's power change from 3 to 6. Grammar's provision cost change from 6 to 7. Ability change to zero order range. Purify unit. Refresh this ability whenever you play an alchemy card. Alchemy cards are Sigdrifa's right. Mardrome, which is not a good card. Freya, which is a good card. Uh, and Runestone, which is an okay card. Um, basically, it is an engined uh, purify card. It's pretty decent. If vampires are seeing play with all that bleed, it will see play. Uh, it is good against bounty. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, yeah, I think it's a fair card. I do think it'll see play. I don't think you're going to be getting, like, multiple takes off. I don't think you can expect this card to be getting, like, two or three or four uh, purifies. You'll most likely be getting the one off of Zeal and then maybe a second. Three if you're really lucky. And even then, you probably don't have three purify targets. So... Yeah, I think it's just an okay card. Uh, maybe there's some crazy scenarios with uh, Doomed. One of them would be uh, Arnoff. If you purify Arnoff, it's no longer Doomed, and then you can decoy it back into your deck, or you can wait the round and then lippy it back into your deck. That's kind of cute. It's not good, but it's cute. Um, yeah, so Grimace will see play. I like the chains. Old Grimace was pretty bad. Yeah. Hemdall power change from 5 to 8. Hemdall provisions cost change from 9 to 12. Hemdall ability change to deploy. Deal 1 damage to a random enemy unit on a row for each unit on that row. Um, I believe the wording is wrong. Random enemy unit um, would tell us that it's only one unit. So if your opponent has 9 units on the row and they have a 2, in theory it could ping that 2 9 times, which would be really bad, obviously. I'm assuming it just randomly pings uh, similar to Delirium Bomb is... Not what it's called. The whale card in SK that pings for six randomly. I would assume this works the same way. The larger the row, the more value. This works well with um, Arnoff. This works well with Great Swords. Uh, you can play a Great Sword and then you can Ice Hemdall uh, to get Great Sword values. Kind of like a mini Dagger. Um, whatever it's called. Um, whatever. I can't remember. Uh, Dagger Herald. Thank you. Um... Yeah, I think this card will see play. It's kind of like an oak. Obviously, it's worse. You don't get to choose the unit to hit, so it's just random. So it's just a good value card. I do think this card will see play. Uh, also mention, it is the only 12 provision card in SK. Otherwise, their highest was 11, so it's another like high point card that they can throw into their deck, which is going to be good in short rounds. So yes, I do think this card will see play. Raging Bear ability change to deploy damage an enemy unit by 2. On this row, if there are no targets, damage self by two. Uh, this card only saw play in Beast SK. Beast SK is dead. Uh, and in that deck, you only wanted to do one damage. And now it does two damage. I don't know why this does two damage. I think this card sucks. Restore now has alchemy tag. Okay, ability change to heal an allied unit and boost it by the amount it was healed. Uh, this card is currently six provisions. It's kind of like a BDM, except 
you can't use it offensively. You can only use it on your cards. So if you use this on a Yetta, it's a 12 for 6, which is quite good. Now, are you going to consistently pull that off? Probably not. So you need to have other targets um, like Light Longship or, say, a Veteran. Uh, will this card see you play? Eh, maybe. 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 We'll see. If there's enough self-wounding cards in your deck and you can get, like, 7 value minimum every time, yeah, you could play this card. Sigjif is right. This is the big hitter for uh, SK this patch. Uh, not the alchemy part, but it's summon a Skelligate unit from your graveyard to an ally row. Uh, it used to only do warriors, which meant it was basically only for, um, yada. Now it can do anything. So you can res an Olaf or a Wild Carl or the transform, Wild, Wild Carl transforms into champion of champions or champion something, whatever. Uh, the 12 point big boy. Uh, you can now res that for nine provisions. Yeah, it's a renew for nine provisions. Yes, you can't renew cards with deploy like Hjalmar or whatever, but honestly, you typically didn't. You usually just made another big boy or res the big boy. So, yeah, this card is absolutely broken. Um, this card will see a lot of play. It'll be auto-included in every single uh, Svalblood list because it's nuts. Amazing card. Um, yep. Sig Vault ability to change the order of melee. Damage a unit by one cooldown. One Berserk four. Damage a unit by two instead. So if this reaches the four uh, health or lower, the Berserk triggers. Um, it's better than it used to be before it was two. So it's much, much better. However, you can't consistently pull this off. You can't, like, play it and then croc ping it. You have to use a Priest. So, like, you're delayed on a turn. Um, I don't think it'll see any play. It saw zero play before. It's going to see zero play after. It's just not that great. Unless there's like a heavy engine overload or uh, load SK deck, then maybe it would see some play. Uh, Svalblood Cultist power change from three to four. Ability change to at the end of your turn, heal the unit on your left by one and damage the unit on the right. So it's basically like uh, the Flaminica that heals the whole row and a priest that damages to the right combined into one. Except it does both of them worse because it doesn't boost itself when it pings and it only heals one unit. So the positioning is super important and the payoff is meh. Yeah. Probably won't see any play. Fanatic ability to change to Berserk too. So no change. It's just using the uh, Berserk keyword and uh, rephrasing it so that it works with it. Bear Master power change from 1 to 4. Bear Master provision cost change from 6 to 4. Uh, Bear Master now has the warrior category. Its ability is now deploy. Give an allied beast vitality for 3 turns. Bonded give uh, any unit uh, vitality. So, you can no longer go plus 10 or plus 12 on a beast, which kind of sucks. Rest in peace, Beast SK. We will forever remember you. Um, it's kind of a fun deck. Oh, well. Sad to see it go. Anyways, uh, this card is potentially 7 for 4. Pog Champ. Uh, only problem is you have to be playing Beast. Are you going to be playing Beast? Yeah, maybe. Um, you have Olaf. You have Roach. You have uh, Morkvarg. Maybe you're running Musicians of Blavikin. It's a pretty good uh, card now, and it is a beast. So, yeah, maybe this card sees some play. Uh, the downside with this type of card is, let's say you're in a short round three, and you draw no beasts, and it's a four. And that's really bad. Like, really, really bad, especially for SK, because SK bronzes are typically insanely good. Um, so, yeah, maybe you run this as a one-of, and you just be careful in round three not to brick on it, or you have, I don't know, you high roll Musicians of Blavikin, you get carryover, and you can give it Vitality. Awesome. Um, it'll see a little bit of play. It's by no means like an auto-include card, but it will see some play because a 7 for 4 is quite good. Uh, veteran ability change to deploy damage self by 3 Berserk to heal self. This card is insane. Um, before, it did not have the Berserk 2, so you could throw this on the board. It starts at 5. If you play Priest next to it and wait 3 turns, it pings it, and then it heals itself to full, which is nuts, which means it's an 8 plus those 3 pings that it's absorbed, and it's an 11. It's 11 for 5. That's good. Not to mention it's good with Hjalmar. Um, I was watching Shinmiri today, and he was talking about replacing Olaf and just running this card instead because you can kind of just replace Olaf with this. He's not wrong. Uh, you play this card, and then you play Olaf on it. You ping for 3 instead of for 4, uh, but then it instantly procs the Berserk, and it goes to 8. And, yeah, uh, it's quite good. Um, 
yeah, we'll have to see. I, I wouldn't be surprised if people stop running Olaf because Olaf did get nerfed. He has 11 provisions. He is quite expensive. You get to save a lot of provisions uh, by cutting Olaf and running Tursic Vet. And you can, it's a bronze. You can run two of them. It has synergy with your Salfoon package, with your Priest. But yeah, this card's really, 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 really good. This card and Sigdrif is right are the two best buffs for SK this patch. Wild card's ability changed to same thing. It's just Berserk 2 now. Um instead of just berserk uh northern realms king full test ability change to boost an allied northern realms unit by one and give it zeal charge three uh so full test was obviously over buff last patch um instead of uh plus two he only gets plus one but there's a bigger change here boost an allied northern realms unit it's only northern realms units which means you can no longer give zeal to Akvis, ike of denzel uh the dragon that has five pings um and any other card, Gaunter, or any other neutral card that they create in the future, uh, which I think is a good thing because it means that they can buff these cards, right? Gaunter sees zero play outside of, well, full test. It won't see it anymore. Um, cards like Aquavis will get reverted. They can get buffed again because uh, Northern Realms can't abuse them. So I think it's a good thing. Uh, it means they have more space to make neutral cards, uh, and I like that. Um, it's going to suck for a bit, but honestly... Yeah, full test was over too. So bringing this back, I still think full test is going to be quite good because the Pavetta Commando po uh, package is very consistent and still very strong. Uh, Queen Calanthe provision changed from 16 to 15. Um, not too surprising. Calanthe is actually pretty good. I was playing a Nivea's Calanthe deck on ladder and it's not bad. It's quite strong. Uh, this isn't a huge surprise. It won't kill the deck. The deck will still be a good deck and it will still see play. Bloody Baron power changed from 7 to 6. Not surprising. Card was insane. Drog ability change to uh, transform all allied units or all allied humans on own row into uh, revenants. So one row instead of two rows. So uh, this is this is a pretty significant nerf. Um, obviously, you can only do one row. And if you row stack one row, A, you're walking into cards like Lacerator, Crushing Trap, any other kind of uh, row AoE. But on top of that, your revenants, when they multiply, they'll cap eventually right at nine. Uh, if you have four revenants on the board plus the drog, that's five units. You can only really make four more, right? And that's assuming you don't have like a salt kirk in your hand that needs to go on the melee row. So this is a pretty big nerf. But to be fair, it was kind of silly. You play commando package in round three, you get like six of them. You play drog plus what other humans you have on the board, and you just win. So uh, yeah. It kind of makes sense. Not surprising whatsoever. Carry match power change from 7 to 5. Uh, this card's no longer auto-include. I do think the card is still playable in like a Meave deck. You play it with Tritum Infantry or a Nathaniel. Otherwise, you probably don't just jam it into every deck because it's not game-breaking anymore. So, I like the change. It'll still see play. Princess Pavetta power uh, provision cost change from 7 to 8. Not surprising. Absolutely insane combo. Roche Merciless power change from 5 to 4. And uh, cost change from 11 to 12. So, you got double nerfed. Um... If you're playing the full test deck, you lost a provision on Pavetta. You lost a provision on Merciless. So you're losing 2P in your deck, and you're losing a good chunk of power. You're losing some power here. You're losing Kira. If you're running Kira, Drogs, obviously, you're losing value on that. And full test, you're losing 3 strength. Um, so yeah, full test got hit pretty hard, but... We can't be surprised. Full test was absolutely insane. The Commando Pavetta combo is still a thing. You can still play 24, 28 crazy points in round three. Um, that's still a combo. And as long as that's a combo, and as long as it's consistent, which it is because of this card, um, I still think this deck is going to be good. Is it going to be game-breaking like it was this past month? No, it will not be. It'll just be a strong deck. Scoia'tael. Yeah, so just a fair warning. Squatel got a lot of buffs. Squatel is going to be very good. Tier 1 good. Might be the best deck in the game. We'll have to see. Uh, Dana, provision change from 15 to 16. This isn't going to do anything. Dana's not very good. She's not going to be good after this change. Yeah, especially because there's Francesca. Francesca bonus for provision went from 13 to 15. This is big. Two extra P's a lot. Um... The reason they're doing this is because she can no longer play non Squiatel cards from her graveyard. This is a pretty big change, right? So you can no longer play a second Muzzle, a second Curse of Corruption, a second Lacerate, a second Ragnarug, a second anything uh, that is not out of Squiatel. So, yeah, you're going to be losing some flexibility there. Obviously, if you're playing Francesca, you're probably just going to be playing um, Water of Broccolon justice and call of the forest which is really good now so call of the forest is play a squatel unit from your deck and boosted by two yep you don't have to 
take a card on your board, throw it into the deck, and whatever. Uh, it's just a Royal Decree plus two, which is really good. Uh, granted, it is Squiatel specific, which means if you're playing Gigni or Professional, you still have to run regular Royal Decree for consistency. But if you're not playing a deck like that, this card's really good. Yeah, this card's insane. You will play this in probably every Squiatel deck because it's just insanely good. Uh, having consistency on cards like Barnabas or Oak is really strong. Um, not to mention, it's really good with Shiru because um, Commander's in round three. Lots of forage. Well, now you can call the forest it. It comes out at five. You ping it down to four with Ethne and boom. Bye-bye, board. Uh, yeah, I love this. It's going to see a ton of play. It did get nerfed from nine to ten, but I think we can all agree that this is a massive buff for the card. Um you're going to see a lot of this card. It's going to probably be auto-included in Squiatel until it gets nerfed because the card is insane. Uh, it's another target with Francesca, and it's a target for Fav, which is very important. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, yeah, fantastic card. Uh, Bomber ability to change the damage two units. Uh, it used to damage one unit on either row. Now it can damage two units on a row, so it doesn't lose value. It's still a five for four, and if it pings shields or like ones, it's pretty bad. Uh, you're not going to play this card outside of maybe a Shoop, Squiatelis. Dryad's Crest ability change to Purify an Allied Unit and boost it by 3. If you control a Dryad, give it Vitality for 3 turn. Um, so it cuts the turn uh, timer in half. It used to do 6 Vitality, which takes took 6 turns, and it was unplayable. Now it's boost 3, and 3 Vitality if you have a Dryad. Um, yeah, this is actually not unplayable. You can play this in a FOB deck if you don't want it to brick. And if Syndicate is seeing a ton of play, well, I should rephrase that. If Bounty is seeing a ton of play, uh, it's pretty good. It's better than the neutral option, Peller. And maybe Bleed Monsters is popular, in which case, yeah, I, I think you might throw a one of in your deck. It's an okay card. It's not unplayable. Dwarven Mercenary, power change from four to three. Uh, provision cost change from five to four. Card was too good with justice, double justice with Francesca. You'd spawn four of these, and you basically just win the game if your opponent can't remove them. Uh, card was absolutely insane. So, yeah, it got toned down. Not surprised. Half-Elf Hunter, ability to change the harmony, deploy, spawn an Elven Deadeye to own row. This card is six provisions. It is a three-strength body that spawns a Elven Deadeye, which is also a three-strength body. So, it's obviously very good for any kind of Elf deck. Aileron, um... Isengrim. Not to mention, this is the first card we've seen that is not a Dryad with Harmony. This is big. Uh, you can play a Harmony deck with non-Dryad Harmonies and get more value. The idea would be something like uh, you play Fav Water, then you play half Elf Hunter, your half Elf Hunter buffs your uh, two Fledglings, and then say you play, I don't know, a Panther. Then you get to buff all the previous cards. I suppose we can skip. Yeah, Weeping Willow now has Harmony. So uh, a very likely scenario is something like water into half elf hunter into maybe another half elf hunter or maybe just into a weeping willow and you have multiple different um harmony cards and then maybe you play a panther after that and all of the previous cards get buffed so this is a really nice change harmony decks will actually be pretty good uh in fact i think it's going to be tier one i think francesca harmony is going to be tier one uh i have a deck ready to play for tomorrow uh you will probably see a youtube video of that deck tomorrow because it looks really good francesca I'm actually a little worried. I'm pretty sure Francesca is overtuned, but yeah, we'll see. Very good card. Hawker Smuggler provision changed from seven to six. Nice. Uh, it's a pretty good engine now. Uh, you play it, you get one immediate buff. I think this card will start seeing some play. Is it auto include? I don't think so, but it's okay. It's also a human, which works well with Harmony. Yep. Yeah. Good change. Mahaka Marauder ability change to deploy gain vitality for two turns. Bonded gain vitality for four turns. Mahaka Marauder provision change from seven to four. Uh, this used to be the card that if it was boosted and you played it, it gained resilient. Uh, I guess they decided it was unplayable or with call it would be OP because with call you play it boosted. Uh, granted, I don't even think that's very good. Uh, regardless, yeah, this is a good card. It is like... Uh, Enchantress in uh, Northern Realms, except you don't have to have a body on the board. It's a proactive card. It's a dwarf. Yeah, you're going to play this card. You play this, and it's a five out of the gate. And if your opponent doesn't remove it, which they're typically not going to, uh, it's a six for four, and it's proactive. Fantastic card. I will be playing this card. Really good card. More in provision change from eight to seven. All right, so where's the Siren change? <sighs> There's no Siren change. Um, yeah, Morin's better than Siren. 
no reason to play Saren unless you need more locks. Morn is just better because worst case scenario, you get seven for seven. Yay. Uh, Saren movement was kind of relevant with Gigni, but you don't play Gigni anymore because it's not a Squaytail unit. And you only watch Squaytail units because Call of the Force is insane. So, yep. Morin is better than Saren. Panther. Ability change to damage an enemy unit by two. Uh, if you play it on the range row, give an enemy unit bleeding for four turns. Uh, big note here. It no longer has the Squaytail restriction. So, if you're playing against Squaytail, it's not like a zero po or a three point card. Uh, it's good in a Harmony deck. Bleed Force is kind of awkward. kind of takes a while. But it's okay. It's all right. You play the card. You break even. Really good in a Harmony deck because you don't have any other beasts. Yeah. If you're playing all in Harmony, it's a reasonable card to play. Outside of a Harmony deck, probably won't see much of it. Pavko. Ability to change the order of range. Damage a unit by one. Cooldown one. If you control only Squirtle units, damage a unit by two. Uh, this card's interesting. This card has been for the longest time the worst uh five point engine in the game now it's the best because it's really easy to play only squatel unless your opponent is playing nilfgaard and they play like spies or something uh, otherwise this is a very easy uh condition to meet and it just pings two every turn yeah this card's really good is it auto include i wouldn't say it's auto include but it's a good card source of power change from three to four okay doesn't really matter um, with the last patch, a lot of the cards got buffed, so having that two death blow is a little harder. Uh, not to mention Skaggs is... I don't like playing Skaggs. It's too... Draw required. Like, you, you have to have good draws for it to be good. Uh, same thing with Sursa. And, like, you used to Sursa Shiru, but you can just do that with Call of the Forest. So I see no reason to play this card. Train board provision change from 8 to 7. Cool. Another 5-point engine you can play. It's not better than Pavco because Pavco pings for two every turn, whereas this pings for two every other turn. Um, so Pavco, I would say, is better than Tree Boar. But it's a good card if you're playing a Harmony deck. It's a Treant, which is good for Harmony. And yeah, it's a decent engine. This card we'll see play. Water Broccolon, big change. Ability change to... Uh, it no longer requires a Fledgling on the board. Um, yeah, this is a massive change. Uh, some people were saying, well, why, why does this need to happen? Well, I think it's pretty important. It was kind of stupid that it wasn't originally like this. Um, right? Because when you play FOV, when you play tutor cards, you want to be tutoring out cards, but you don't want to have to be forced to tutor out a card, right? When you play Water of Broccolon currently in the game, you have to mulligan it every time. If you draw it, you mulligan it, right? When you're playing Nilfgaard and you're playing Muzzle and Menno, you don't mulligan the muzzle away because you have to pull it out with Menno. No, of course not. You just keep it in your hand because it's a good card. Water was not a good card out of hand. Um, now it is. Now it's a playable card. Now you're not forced to play Fav. Um, yeah, this is a big change. I think it was necessary. The card just so clunky before. It just didn't make any sense. Uh, I, I made a comparison. Imagine if uh, Justice in Syndicate... Uh, if you don't pull it with Furco, which is their uh, tutor card, it only spawns one dwarf. How stupid would that be, right? If you play Justice from hand and it only spawns one dwarf, it would see zero play, right? Forcing it to be pulled off of Furco would kind of kill the card. Well, that's kind of how Water of Broccolon works. Uh, I said this to Shinmiri. He disagreed and said that, well, sometimes you get to play Water of Broccolon because you have Dryads on the board. But I've played this deck a lot. That's not the case. Um... You don't want to keep Fledglings in round three because they're not good. You don't play Morin. You play Morin now, but you didn't play Morin before because she wasn't very good. And that's all the Dryads you played in your deck. So most of the time, it was just a four for 11. That's really, really bad. So I'm very happy this change happened. Uh, you don't have to mulligan an 11p card out of your hand, which just felt so bad. Um, yeah, good quality of life change. Uh, the other... Thing to note is before call of the forest and water broccolon had anti-synergy now that's no longer the case uh you can throw both of them into your deck with fav even crest if you really want to uh and they're just all really good they're just good cards you can play them standalone you can play them from hand and not worry about bricking yeah water of broccolon is going to start seeing a lot of play because you no longer have the must run uh fav which was really 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 clunky um yeah this card's really good now uh, so much so that it, I, I wouldn't say it's auto-include, but it's a very good card. You're definitely going to see this in Francesca. Waylay, we got an ability change. Damage, enemy unit by three, death blow, spawn, elven, deadeye on random row. Um, this card is five provisions, I believe. They brought it down from six. The idea is it's kind of like a BME, 
kind of. It does three damage and it spawns a three. Granted, you don't have the condition where it's only one row, but or one unit on that row. But you do have to get the death blow. Um, if you're playing Ethne, that's not too hard. So I think this card is okay in an Ethne deck because you're typically killing engines anyways. A lot of four engines are in the game. Your opponent plays a four-point engine. You Ethne it and you play Waylay. Cool. Six for five. Removal. Put a body on the board. That's good. Um, is it auto-include? No. Uh, outside of Ethne, I don't think it'll see too much play. Uh, it is a tactic, so I suppose it's good in Dana because it's a playable tactic. Granted, I don't think Dana's going to see any play because Francesca's going to overshadow her. Um, you could play this in an elf deck, but in elf decks, you will play Vanguards, and Vanguards wants units. So if this was like a one-strength unit that pinged a three and then death blow spawned a three... Yeah, I think it would be playable in an elf deck, but in its current iteration, I don't think it'll see much play in an elf deck just because you don't really want to play specials in an elf deck. Weeping Willow, ability to change to harmony, deploy melee, gain shield, deploy range, poison enemy unit. Very, very happy about this. Um, we finally have a gold card that doesn't suck, uh, that can poison a unit. And it's a hefty gold card. It's six strength, seven provisions. Um... It is a Treant, which is good with Harmony. Uh, I do think this card will see play. I think Poison will be good next patch. I know I've said that from time to time. Um, I don't think you all in Poison. I think the very simple package is one Weeping Willow, two Dryad Rangers. Dryad Rangers are the threes that ping for two and then have the Poison attached to it. Uh, and they have Harmony. So all these cards kind of synergize well with each other with all the Harmony. Um, the idea with those three cards is you're usually going to draw at least two of them. And if you draw two of them, well, you get to kill a unit. That's really good. Um, and then the third one on their own is just good, right? If you play Weeping Willow on its own, it's a large unit with Harmony. It'll probably go to eight, and it has a shield. That's pretty good. Um, if you play Weeping Willow with Ranger, you kill a unit. And then the other Ranger you play later on is basically a Dryad Fledgling, right? It's a five for five with Harmony, whereas a Fledgling is a four for four with Harmony. So, yeah, I think that package you will start seeing uh, because it's good. And it will see play. I was already running two Rangers and Treant Mantis. And this is just better than Treant Mantis. The problem with Treant Mantis is you play it and your opponent sacks a weak unit into it because they're playing around Pitfall Trap and Incinerating Trap. Uh, and this kind of plays around it. So it's just a better Mantis and it will see play. This is a very good card. Look out. Uh, Nilfgaard. So we're almost done. We're, we're almost done. We got two, two, two more factions and they're quite short. Anna now has 15 provisions. Or sorry, went from 15 to 16. Um... Don't think it does anything. The leader kind of sucks because Syndicate kind of ruins it. Ruins the whole uh, the whole pool. Uh, cards in Syndicate are basically unplayable outside of Syndicate. Uh, I don't think this is enough to push Ana, but we'll see. Emissary ability change to spying deploy boost an enemy unit by seven. I believe this card is five provisions. It is a one point body on your opponent's side of the board, so it's a six for five. Cool. Okay, I guess. Um, sure. Spies got buffed. Is spy package good? No. Is this card good enough to resurrect spies? Nope. Fire Scorpion. Power change from 4 to 3. So it looks like uh, CDPR realized that buffing engines that do damage with pings at 4 strength is a little too oppressive. We saw this card in uh, uh, Hyper Thin Dex with Portal. They would play Portal into two Fire Scorpions and basically just start killing everything. Um, I don't think it kills the card. I think you can still run... Uh, two Fire Scorpions and Portal. The idea is if you play them, typically they can't remove both of them at once. Um, so they kill one and you still have the other one. You can boost it with the Joust. And it's a six strength unit with shield and almost no deck can deal with that outside of lock. But if it locks, it means your Hefty Helgi lives. Um, yeah, I think it's a playable card. I think it was oppressive before. Just like um, the, the Dwarf card. I'm blanking. Uh, the Mercenary Dwarf card. Uh, that was also for strength. So, yeah, I, I think the card was way too good. Uh, I like the change. I do think it's still playable. Obviously, it is a nerf, but it's not, like, unplayable anymore. Uh, Serret, ability to change to deploy damage an enemy unit by two if Ox is in your hand. Damage it by four instead. Yeah. Um, the difference between doing four damage and five damage is massive. Uh, every five strength unit that you've killed or engine that you've killed in the past, you can't kill anymore. Uh, this is a massive nerf. Uh, so much so that I don't know if you can play the Witcher, the Trio Witcher package. This is a huge nerf. Huge. And even on his own, he can't do three damage, which means he's not even killing, like, weaker engines. So, yeah. CDPR is going pretty hard on this whole Gold's doing five damage. It doesn't look like CDPR wants that. Um, which means engine decks are going to be better. 
Uh, so yeah, I think Calanthe is going to be good. Calanthe engine overload is going to be good next patch. It was good this patch, and it didn't really get... It got nerfed by 1p. Um, yeah, uh, this is a huge change. That's unfortunate. The good Nilfgaard Hyper Thin list did not run the Triple Witcher package anyways, so this doesn't matter for those decks. Uh, I think Hyper Thin will still be the best Nilfgaard deck after the patch, uh, and there will be another deck, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, Serret Provision cost change from 9 to 8. Doesn't really matter. Stefan, ability to change the order, spawn, and play a copy of Last Tactic card. You played this round. Uh, so now it's not the one that you played uh, this turn. The reason why this matters is... If you play a Damien list with Petri's filter, I know that sounds crazy, but I have played it and it's not that bad. Uh, the idea is you use your Ardle twice. Um, you play Petri filter so that you can guarantee get it off. And sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, sometimes uh, the Stefan, or sorry, the Damien goes off no problem. And then you can use the Petri filters on Stefan, except. You can't because it doesn't really make sense because you can't play Stefan and play a Tactic in the same turn unless you're playing Calvi, but you're not because you're playing Ardle. Um, now you can do that. You can play Petri Filter uh, if your Damien goes off. You can then Stefan later on in the round and then replay so something like your Muzzle or your Garrison that you played earlier that round. So that's really good. Uh, that deck obviously is better now. Is it good enough to push it into viability? Perhaps. We'll have to see. Um <coughs> I need to drink some water. One second. Mm. Almost done. Yennefer's Invocation. This is the big, big change to Nilfgaard. This is huge. Uh, ability to change to place enemy unit or artifact at the top of your deck. It used to be your opponent's deck. Now it's your deck. It's an Omega Yoink, right? You thought you could never muzzle a spear tip because it was out of the range of muzzle. Well, now you can. You just invocation their spear tip, it's on top of your deck, and then you play Poet, and then you have a spear tip. That's crazy. Uh, you could do it with Calvit, you can do it with Vilgefort, similar to how you do it in Tibor and Hyperthin right now. You can uh, invocation your opponent's Wildcarl or the Transform Champion or Olaf, and then you get to throw it into the top of your deck, and then you play Vilgefort, and then pop a small unit off the side of the board, and then you got a big boy on your side of the board. Uh, and it denies your opponent's SIG. This is a really good card. This is, like, better than Karanthi Heatwave. And you get extra value in your deck. Um, it's like a... The sword card. I can't... Gated sword. That you, you ping a unit for two, death blow, you get to play that card. It's like that, except any card in the game... Unconditional. Like... Yeah, okay, you have to play Poet or Vilgefortz, but Vilgefortz is already a pretty good card. You can throw Cynthia into the deck, so you can use it offensively on top of that. Uh, Poet is got buffed, and I think this is a good enough reason to play Poet. This card is very good. You will see this deck. Um, I will probably play a list with, like, Vilgefortz, Cynthia, uh, Invocation, maybe a few... Um, Banish cards to banish your opponent's high P cards. It's basically like toolbox nilf guard. The idea is you basically just disrupt your opponent's deck. It's going to be a really deck, uh, really fun deck to play. It's going to be really unfun to play against because that's just disruption nilf guard is unfun to play against because, yeah, whatever. You, you don't get to play your deck how you want to play your deck. So this this will be a thing. Um, I guess prepare yourself. Syndicate, new leader uh, card added. So we're getting a new card this six, uh, this patch. It is the Runestone for Syndicate. Uh, Walter to play Create and play a Bronze Syndicate uh, faction card. Um, Runestone right now is five provisions. This card is nine provisions and has a four-point body. So it's a Runestone plus a four-point body. And honestly, I would argue it's better than Runestone. Having an additional body on the board is quite good. And you get to play a faction card, uh, a Bronze faction card. And Syndicate Bronzes are quite good. Uh, it's not only units, so you can play like uh, specials in that faction. Um, I'll put it this way. If this was a Squayatel card, I'd play it. Granted, the power level of Syndicate golds are sometimes higher uh, than Squayatel. But yeah, I, I think it's playable. Is it auto-include? Of course not. Um, if you have the room for it, I don't see why you wouldn't play it. The only reason you don't play it is if you have no room and 9p is too competitive and you just your whole deck is full. But I do think this card will start popping up here and there. Bounty ability change. So Bounty has been a very degenerate mechanic since it first came out. Uh, on live 
and it's really unfun to play against and it feels in some cases like there's nothing you can do your opponent plays a bounty card and then plays another bounty card and then plays another bounty card and then plays executioner or 15 years and your whole board disappears and you cry because that's not fun to play against and just running purify forehead is not a good enough counter especially because not all decks have good purify uh options so now whenever this part is the same but when bounty is placed on a unit remove bounties from other units on that side of the board you can only have one bounty on your opponent's side of the board now which means yeah if they place a bounty they cannot place another bounty until they kill that card they can actually play another bounty and you will queue against people who try to play multiple bounties They'll lose points. They'll hover over the card, reread bounty, and then concede. Well, maybe they'll concede. They might still win. Whatever. Um, but yeah, one bounty a turn. This is huge. So as I just mentioned, typically you would rack up on the bounties, and then you'd go ham and kill them all. Now you have to play fairly and give a bounty and then kill it. And then your opponent has a turn to react and kill the executioner or the Ewald. Um, yes, in theory, you could have like two executioners and an Ewald in your hand and just still kill all the bounty cards but that means you have three cards that are dedicated to uh bounty removal and it means you're not playing those cards another round so uh this is obviously a huge nerf does it kill bounty probably not but you're going to see a lot less of it especially at the beginning people are going to immediately stop playing bounty at the very start because they're probably going to be playing francesca uh but yeah, I, I think Bounty is okay. I'm not exactly an expert on Bounty. I've played maybe 30 games, not even 30, maybe 15 games of Bounty ever, like period. Uh, I don't like the mechanic. I hate playing it. I hate playing against it. Um, so I'm not really an expert. Does this kill it? I'm not the best person to ask. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow whether or not Bounty is still good. We'll see. Cleaver ability to change to play Syndicate special from your deck if provisions cost is 10 or less, gain two coins. Kind of sad about this one. Um, the only Cleaver deck that existed in the game was Shoop Cleaver, and now it's dead because you can't play Shoop with Cleaver. Uh, yeah, it no longer has the deck building requirement, but honestly, that wasn't a big deal. So yeah, this kind of sucks. Um, it went from like a meme fun leader to unplayable. This card or leader will see zero play. Um, unless there are other syndicate specials that are added in the future. Yeah, no reason to play this leader. It's kind of unfortunate. Um, but it makes sense with CDPR's goal in that they want to limit factions to hitting faction-specific cards. They don't want it to be able to hit anything in the game. Um, and I think this is a good direction for CDPR to take for the future just because it means that they can make really interesting cards and not worry that other faction leaders or... Um, I guess mostly leaders can abuse it, right? So they can create a new special card that's really good that they don't have to worry about uh, Francesca abusing by playing twice. Uh, in the same way, they can create maybe a crazy special, maybe a Scorch that's twice as good as Scorch and Cleaver can't abuse it because they can't play it in the same turn with a, another card. So yeah, it makes sense. It's just unfortunate that it has to happen to a leader that was already kind of just a meme, so... That's kind of unfortunate. Deekster ability change to order, gain one coin, charge five, gain one coin whenever you play a crime. Uh, this was the most popular, or at least this was my favorite uh, rework of Deekster. Deekster was obviously broken. Uh, it was a better gut run like 90 plus percent of the time. Um, this change makes him not broken. Uh, it makes him fair. He'll still get the same amount of value. It just means he can't carry it over into round three, which was a problem because he typically brought in like 11 to 13 coins in round three, and it was just absolutely insane. So good change obviously uh will Dijkstra still see play I don't know honestly I have no idea I I don't even own Dijkstra I forced myself not to play a single game I probably will never play a single game with him because I just I, I don't like the Townsville combo uh so yeah not the best person to ask whether or not this will kill the leader we'll have to see honestly time will tell eavesdrop provision change from five to six not a surprise they over buffed the card last patch it was a five for five that thinned the card out of your deck yeah, it was broken before. Uh, the card is still good. It'll still see play. If you asked monsters, would you like to play a 5 for 6 that thins a card out of your deck? They'd say yes. Every faction would say yes. Uh, other than maybe SK. Uh, yeah, this card's still good. It'll still see play. Fist tech ability change to profit for poison a unit. Uh, this used to have profit 3. Um, 
card saw no play outside of cleaver it'll see actually some play because of this down here we'll get to in a second so we'll come back to the flying redania power change from four to three and this uh p cost went down to nine uh from ten big change uh it walks into spheres now how much nerf guard will be on ladder i'm not sure um yeah it's a big change no longer four 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 it's three 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 so you're losing three value over three rounds and yeah that's about it uh pretty big nerf It'll still see spawn play, but the play rate will go down a bit. Igor, go down one. Uh, no longer can you spam tons of townsfolk. So that's nice. Very happy about that. Swindle ability change to profit a random amount between three and five. Yep, dead card. Uh, it used to be four and six. If you rolled a four, it was okay. Rolling five was average, and then rolling a six, you were happy. Now it sucks. This card is unplayable. Um, I think if you need this kind of effect in the game... Or, sorry, if you need the ability to gain coins and not be playing, like, profit units uh, on that turn, you can start playing Pickpocket. Pickpocket is a 6 for 6. Granted, it never saw play because Swindle was broken and overshadowed it. Now, there's actually a decent reason, especially if you're playing cards like Flying Redanian. Uh, and Fist Tech might see some play because, uh, on average, you're going to be getting 4 coins from this. And this does the same thing. And it poisons a unit. So, if you draw 2 of them, you get to kill anything. So, yeah. You will probably see this card over Swindle. Game fixes. Okay. 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 Cool. Um, yeah, that's all the changes. I'm going to go through and tell you what I think is going to be tier one on day one. Uh, I think Francesca is going to be tier one. Period. Francesca is going to be insane. Um, a lot of changes to Harmony. A lot of new Harmony cards. Not Harmony. Not new Harmony. Well, I guess Willow and... Uh, half Elf Hunters are both new. We have Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard is still going to be very good. Hyperthin Nilfgaard is still going to be strong. Ardol Nilfgaard is still going to be strong. And I think some kind of toolbox Nilfgaard will be good with Yennefer's Invocation. Uh, so definitely be watching out for Nilfgaard. Syndicate, I have no idea. Um, I don't want to say they're unplayable. Uh, but the play rate will definitely go down. That is for certain. Um, the real question is, can you play a Syndicate deck without Bounty? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, Hemelfart was a deck that didn't play much bounty, and that deck didn't get nerfed at all, so you can still play that deck. Uh, so maybe Hemelfart is the go-to leader now. Maybe you can play a Point Slime Gudrun leader. I don't know. Maybe you play Wholesome Junior, and you just play removal decks with a little bit of bounty sprinkled in. I don't know. I don't think Syndicate's unplayable. They're just not Tier 0. They're probably Tier 2, Tier 1.5. Um, uh, Nilfgaard, I mentioned. Hyperthin will be good. Uh, Ardol will be good. Yeah. Squayatel, Francesco will be very, very good. Tier 1, probably, or, or very, either, either the best deck or, like, tied for best deck. It's going to be a very, very good deck. Uh, Ethne will still be good. Yeah, all the other leaders just do what Francesca and Ethne do, but worse. So, yeah, you're going to be you're gonna play those two leaders. Northern Realms, Full Test is still going to be good. Calanthe is still going to be good. Removal got nerfed this patch, uh, so Calanthe will be a little better, even though she got nerfed by 1P. Um... Yeah, you will still see Northern Realms. It'll still be a good faction. SK, lots of changes to SK. Uh, SK you should be looking out for. The only reason why SK wasn't played this month is because uh, Syndicate and Northern Realms are broken and they overshadowed SK. So now that both of those factions have been toned down, uh, SK can kind of do what it used to do. Uh, they can play uh, Svalblood. On top of that, Sigdrif is right. Got significantly buffed, and it's really, really good now. So, um, yeah, SK is going to be strong. Is going to be Tier 1? Probably. Svalblood's probably going to be the SK best SK leader. Um, maybe Iced? I'm not sure about Iced. That's something you have to play with. Uh, being able to hit any SK unit is kind of cool. You could play Canby twice if you want. Technically three times with their new, I suppose, but you can play it twice realistically with ice. I don't know if you want to do that, but you could if you wanted to, I guess. Um, and we have monsters. Monsters, I'm not sure. I don't know how good vampires will be. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, this is the type of thing where you got to play it and you just have to see. Um, as far as like big monsters, I don't think big monsters are going to be tier one simply because SK does big stuff better. Um, yeah. Yeah. So monster, big monster is going to get overshadowed by big SK, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, and neutrals, 
Bork will see some play. TK will see a little bit more play. Scorch won't increase in play. Sangreal doesn't matter. Musician Jablavikin, you'll be looking out for that. That card will start seeing some more play. Heat Wave, I don't think we'll see any play unless SK goes crazy and sees a ton of play. And Poet, I think, will be a very good card in an Invocation Nilfgaard deck and might be a consideration for other decks. We'll have to wait and see. I'll definitely be testing that out. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. It took me an hour and ten minutes, which... A little longer than I expected, but I suppose it's shorter than three and a half hours, so that's nice. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the review. I hope you guys can tune in tomorrow to see some crazy decks that we come up with. And I'll see you guys on the next video.